Well, we're here at Premier B in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, we're here with Marla Spivak. Uh, in my opinion, the, the, the leading expert in propolis, you've done so much in your body of work uh, to not only help beekeepers, uh, but help bees. It's an honor to be uh, spending time with you today I'm working on some new projects when it, regarding to uh, Premier B. Marla, in your experience with all these years, if you could possibly simmer it all down, would there be three things that you want everybody to know about propolis? Ah. Propolis is so good for bees. It's probably good for humans, we know that, but it's really good for bees. And it really is a vital component of what I call their healthcare system. Mm. So it's a preventative and a therapeutic help for them. It's just a vital component of their hive structure. And having a good propolis envelope or layer surrounding the brood combs of propolis within the box is what I think essential for bees. It restores how they used to be in, in feral mm. trees. That's how it was. How important is it, do you think, to create those environments within modern beekeeping that more closely mimics nature with yeah. the bee tree? I think it's very important. But that's what our research shows. That's what the data shows. But more importantly, that's what the bees do. That's what they've been doing for ages. Yeah. Nesting in a tree and bringing in propolis and lining the whole interior with this propolis envelope. So... We were just curious why they would do that, so our data show tell us why, and it's part of their part of what keeps them so healthy. After all these years of studying bees and studying propolis and the benefits and all the data, what's been one of the most unexpected data points that you've learned about the relationship of bees and propolis? Well, I thought you were going to ask me the most unexpected thing, which would be sitting here. <laughs> and having research go to market, which is like a dream, especially for students, yeah. all this hard work to have it, have them realize that what you do can make a difference. Mm. Um, that, that just is heartwarming. But the most surprising data point is just how it just kept unfolding one thing after another. I mean, the immune system stuff is, you know, maybe difficult to understand, but that was fascinating how it stabilizes the microbiome was, wow, that's cool. And it just kept kept un, unrolling, you know, that they would self-medicate, that if they have chalk brood disease, they send out more resin foragers. You know, it was just one student after another just kept rolling in with data that would blow my socks off. <laughs> it was it's, fun. It's, it's awesome because, you know, sometimes there is a um, an unintentional dichotomy between the information and the data and the, the practicality of it, how to get the information yeah. uh, out into the field to actually help beekeepers and help bees. I'm really excited about this collaboration with yeah. Propolis, um, with uh, your studies and uh, the future of Premier Bee and the Propola line, I think are gonna have so many opportunities to do good uh, to the bees and promote healthier beekeeping. Right, it's really about the bee. It's for the bee, it's yeah. not really about me. Right. Sorry, it's not about you either. It's not. You're right. It's really about, it's about the bees. helping bees. Absolutely. Marla, thanks for sharing your thoughts uh, for this collaboration and, again, for all the work that you and your team have put in uh, to Propolis to keep in healthier bees. Thank you.